Hey everybody, it's Chris and I'm back to do another painting with you today. So today we're gonna do another flip cup and um, this is another one of my contest winners paintings and this one is for Wendy. So um, these are some colors that I had uh, asked her if she liked and it was a go. So we're gonna go with these colors today. As I said before, flip cups are just like a really fun technique to me because I love the reactions that the paint have with, have with each other, as well as you can do so many different color combinations and just really have fun with it. So hopefully this is a good color combo. We'll find out here. Um, the colors we're using today are pink. This is a master's touch color. Light portrait pink is a Liquitex Basics. Viridian is another master's touch and it kind of reminds me of kind of like a verdigray green. I'm also using metallic cobalt. This is an artist loft color. This is one of my favorite colors to use. And then I've also got some champagne gold. And the champagne gold is, is this Deco Art Elegant Finish Metallic Paint. So um, that's what's in this bottle here. And then I believe we're also going to mix in a little bit of white, um, just because the colors are lighter. I think it would be nice to have a little bit of contrast of white in there. So we're gonna put some white in with this as well. So I'm just gonna set my cups or my bottles over here to the side and get them opened up and we'll get started. Um, I'm working on a 12 by 16 canvas again. Just trying to decide how I want these colors to be layered into the cups. So today I'm gonna use these little um, paper cups and these are about five ounces. And yesterday when I did that other painting, I had way too much paint. So we're gonna go for a lot less paint today. I'm gonna to start with the Master's Touch Pink in two of them. And then I think we'll start with the Vertigray or the Viridian in the other two. And let's see, I want to, so these are, I'm gonna try and get these caught back up, but I, I wanna, I'm not sure that it's a good idea to put the blues and the, um, turquoise and greens next to each other. So let me get these layered up and then we'll get them all on the same. That one's got a little bit of a weird thing on the end of it, doesn't it? Then I should be able to have them all layered on this in the same way. And let's see, I think we'll do white. have to stop and think about how I have these things layered in here. Get myself all confused. But if I can get to the, these to the point where they're all the same colors going in, it'll be a lot easier. Let's see. And then we're gonna do this one and this one. There we go. I don't think I have these. I'm not doing these in the right order, but that's all right. I was trying to like get them all so that I could just layer all four cups at the same time, but I'm not thinking this through properly, so that's all right. We'll just do these kind of in a random order, but as long as we have the paints in the right order, that's all that matters. I think they'll be really pretty colors all together, so. I'm anxious to see how this one turns out. I don't know that I've ever put these colors together. So hopefully it turns out super pretty. And hopefully she loves it. That is always the goal. There we go, now I finally have them in the right order. I think we're really close to having enough in these two. Let me just put a little bit more in these two in the center. I'm just trying to make sure all of my cups are about even with the same amount of paint in them. Definitely a lot less paint than what we had yesterday. So <clears throat> this should be about right. 
I did not put any silicones in the paint this time. Um, when I did my last flip cup, I added some silicone to them because the paints were a little bit older. Um, I didn't add any silicone this time. We're just gonna see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip these guys over. I kind of ran out of, I like to use plastic cups so that I can kind of see when the paint drops out of the bottom, but I kind of ran out of my smaller plastic ones. So <clears throat> this is a little bit friendlier anyway when we're using the paper. Let me lift this up so you can kind of see what the paints are already doing. So I think that gold is going to be kind of interesting because it tends to not look super pretty when you first like pour it, but then as it dries, it seems like the the metallic and the prettiness comes back into it. So I'm gonna start here in the middle and just pull this down. And my goal is always to try to get down to the bottom of the canvas. And sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. But that's what tilting was for, right? Wow, those are really pretty colors. I think this is going to look really cool when it's done. And let me grab my torch and we'll pop those bubbles real quick. So you want to be careful if you're using a torch to pop bubbles because it can also create some effects in the paint. And sometimes it can create long chains of what some people refer to as worms, which is not always the prettiest thing in a painting, in my opinion. I've got some big bubbles there and I didn't want to cook the paint or create anything weird. So let me just grab a toothpick and we'll pop that one real quick. Along with a couple other ones that I see that I wasn't able to pop with the, with the torch. All right, so these are really pretty colors together. Holy cow, I love that. And as I said, you can kind of see the gold right in here <clears throat> and over here. It does not look very pretty right now, but trust me, it'll be beautiful when it's dry. Okay, so since we have so much paint going down here, I think we may start on that end of it. And I kind of feel like I wanna use my spatula and maybe cover these corners just a smidge. I find that it's a little bit helpful if you can get some paint up here. And even though it doesn't necessarily cover all the way, it'll help the paint to travel that way. So I'm just gonna grab some off of the canvas or off of my plastic and just kind of grab these corners real quick just to kind of get things moving so that it's a little bit easier for us to cover those corners. And I'm not too concerned that the paint's not beautiful on those corners. That's not what I'm going for. I'm just trying to get, um, I guess, you know, when it's a dry spot, sometimes it doesn't always flow really well. So I'm just kind of trying to cover those spots to help the paint flow a little bit easier. And you'll find that if you, like, even in that little area that I um, put some paint, it'll flow easier and it just, I don't know, for some reason it just works out much easier that way. All right, so I've got quite a bit of paint over here, so I'm going to see if I can kind of move it over to the left a little bit. And as always, since I have these kind of cool lines, I'm going to see if I can try to keep those lines. And right now I'm just trying to get my paint to start moving. And I think a lot of my weight of my paint is in the middle of the canvas. If you notice, that's kind of where the paint is moving. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tip it down towards the top there and see if I can get it moving here a little bit. <clears throat> and I like to kind of move it slow because I don't wanna dump a bunch of paint off. And I can tell that I have quite a bit of paint on here, but it's just not wanting to move very well right now. So just going nice and slow so that I don't dump off a bunch. Because I know that I have enough on here to cover the whole canvas, so I don't wanna dump off too much before I have the entire canvas covered. There we go, now we're slowly getting down there. And over the edge, and then I'm going to bring it back down a little bit and get that weight down back onto the canvas. And now I'm going to go over here to the left and see if I can get this kind of going over the edge. And we're going to 
to kind of straighten it out a little bit to kind of get those lines back in where they need to be. I can tell that my paint is kind of down here towards the bottom now. So we're going to go over here on the left and see if we can get that covered. I think it was a good idea to put that white in there too, because I really like the contrast that that's giving it. And I'm just going to kind of let it flow back up and come over here to the right side. Got a little chunk right there. I am going to grab that right now before I get too far so that it's not a big boo-boo that we have to fix later. All right, so now I'm just letting the paint flow over here to the right. And I want it to come down a little bit more. There's still quite a bit of paint on here, so I definitely have enough to cover everything. And I'm just gonna grab this up here a little bit further so that I can get that corner covered, just like that. And then I'm gonna see if I can kind of straighten those lines out just a little bit. All in all though, it looks pretty darn good. And then I'm just gonna let the paint kind of flow up towards the top a little bit more and kind of even it out a bit. I do have this one corner up here that did not cover very well, but I'm just gonna use my, <clears throat> my little spatula and kind of touch that up because otherwise I'm afraid it will just create a big mess. So I'm just gonna come over here into my paint and come up here on the top and then just let it flow over and cover that side just like that. And then if I kind of tip a little bit, I can probably get that edge to kind of go over the side so that you won't even know that I had to touch it up. There we go, just like that. And then I'm gonna bring this back down a little bit and straighten my lines out again. There we go. All right, let me get you back in frame here so you can see. And then um, as a last Last step, I'm just gonna check and make sure that all of my corners are covered and that everything looks really pretty. <clears throat> and as I said, this is really gonna be beautiful when it dries. But you can see that I didn't put any silicone. Let me take my gloves off, otherwise I'm gonna end up dripping in the paint. And ask me how I know that one because I've ruined a painting before by like pointing things out and dropped paint right in the middle of it. But you can see the really cool chains that we have of cells and kind of some webbing up in here. We've got webbing down in here as well. So I didn't put any silicones in the paint this time and I still got some really cool effects. And that's because of <clears throat> the paint and the pouring medium that I use. And the pouring medium that I use is four cups of Floetrol, one cup of glue all, a half a cup of Liquitex pouring medium and a half a cup, or excuse me, a quarter cup of water. And then I mix my paints about two um, to three parts of pouring medium to one part of paint. So I that's what I use for my pouring medium. Not everyone uses a pouring medium. Some people just use straight Floetrol. Some people use the glue all and, and water it down. I have found that this is a recipe that works for me, so I've kind of stuck with it. So, <clears throat> you know, when you find something that works and that you're getting really good results with, it's kind of hard to change things up. So I really love how this has turned out. I love all the colors in it. I think it's really a kind of a cool color combination. I might have to do more with this one. All right, guys, so that is a completed painting. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Please make sure you ring the bell for notifications. And um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you so much for watching today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.